And, and I say this all fucking naive. I've never fucking seen a draft in my life. This is what I'm saying. How, how thick is the draft? They're thick. That's what I'm saying. There's not actually a number. You could you could call. You could say, "Oh, big bull elk is is 24 inches thick." No, where where are you going to shoot them? They're less than 20. Maybe 18 thick. inches. Yeah. I'm going to shoot the motherfucker right behind the shoulder. I'm going to drop that thing. Donald Trump here. We ran right over Nikki Haley. Sleepy Joe, wakey wakey. We're coming for you next. But I'm here to endorse the Shoot to Hunt podcast. It's the best. Just ask the people. Look at the people. The beautiful peoples. Give it up for Jake the Beauty Giant and Ryan the Elk Slayer. <laughs> the fat ass comment's kind of fitting in right now. Because we're going to have to do a diet update here. Yep, day, well, I was corrected, day eight. You said fucking five earlier. We started on Thursday, so. You're so far off. I wasn't really, I've been in a blur. Mathematical skills are, uh. Some days I math, some days I don't. <laughs> some days I math. <laughs> Depends on the day. Like today, today's. So when, I, when I tell you it's eight, you fucking, you still didn't believe it. Just like everything else. But you, you just that kind of, you literally had to bust your fingers out to try to figure out who was right. I, I'm not in the. the Strong Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, well, yeah, it I is. Thinking, eight. Well, it's Thursday. But you know, my brain, I was thinking it was Tuesday. All like, right. This carnivore diet fucked me up the first week. I'm feeling pretty clear. I had to live at the toilet the first, well, not the first day, not the second day, third and fourth day. Unfortunately, I've already had to hear about this diarrhea bout for, for like 10 different times now. Well, when something's impressive, it keeps coming back up. <laughs> and it was impressive. Is there a video? Because if there's not a video, it didn't happen. Dude, if there's a video, <laughs> I'd already have it on my OnlyFans. <laughs> that would be nasty. Yeah, just imagine a turkey shotgun load hitting the toilet. <laughs> you know, a f- funny story. I don't know if my dad listens to this podcast, but he's gonna he's gonna hear it. It's gonna be funny, right? Uh, when I was a kid, you know, you'd have to go clean the toilets, like you know, we did all the chores and all that, right? And uh, there was always like shit, like up underneath the back of the toilet seat, and I was always wondering to myself, I was like, how do you? How does it go that direction from your butthole? Like how the physics, how does that happen? Physically, what is happening? Is there a fucking tornado in there that whips it back around the other way? Well, it's, uh, it happened to be a couple of times in my life and it gets under there and you realize that it's just the explosion. It's like the, when the cork fucking gets pulled and it's mm-hmm. bam. Yeah. And it ricochets off fucking everything and somehow ends up underneath the toilet seat. I don't know how we got on this. But <laughs> Fuck. I, I told you, I, back when I got out of the army, I delivered Tony's Red Baron pizza. And yep. I had to do the duty and I had to go up these old ass rickety stairs and the bathroom was like a hundred years old and small and tiny. And it just wasn't working out for me that day. And I just turned around, got my pants down and it it just boom. And dude, it hit the wall above the toilet. (laughs) All I did is clean myself up and shut the door and fucking left. (laughs) Somebody's going to hear that story. They'll be like, that was the motherfucker I had to clean up after. Dude. I think that they just probably went in and they just burned the whole fucking house down. Because <laughs> the toilet's dirty, we're we're burning it down. You know, everybody. What I figured out is everybody has their own poop story, right? And you know, you know how it is, dude. I was driving in there in that pizza truck, and I, you start sweating, and you know, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> and I fucking didn't. And I got to those stairs, and they were literally like the old, steep, skinny little stairs. And I'm trying to squeeze that bitch off. And I know I got to fucking go up like 20 flights of stairs, you know, or 20 flights. I got to go up 20 stairs. And then to get to that bathroom and it's like as wide as my shoulders, like I could barely turn around in there. There's, they had a sink and a toilet and basically they're a freaking half inch apart. Anyways, it's just in my mind, it's worse than it is. Cause mm. at the moment there's only one thought going through my mind is this is going to happen before I want it to. <laughs> Anyways, it was just boom. There's two different shit scenes I always think about in a movie when we talk about shit scenes. So, so the one is uh, probably the most obvious one is Dumb and Dumber. Yes. The shit scene in Dumb and Dumber is just ridiculous. Yes. You know, I think it was uh, like X Lax or whatever that he, you know, he gave him. Um, and that that is classic. Uh, the second one is on, and I don't know which movie it is, but the movie Friday. <laughs> yeah. Where he's in the fucking dog truck. He's in the, he's in the, uh, what do you call those guys that have to catch the dogs? Dog catcher. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the dog catcher truck. <laughs> so he's he's in the truck and he eats a he t- he's eating a burrito or whatever. He go, and all of a sudden it's like, uh oh, it, it hits right. You know, blah, blah, blah. you know. Yeah. And then he uh, he's making his way. I think he gets to the house 
And uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the detail, but it was a good, uh, Dude. a good scene. One day when we're really telling stories, <clears throat> I'll tell you how I wrecked three young ladies' lives riding horses that I didn't know they were there. Oh no! I, I've told you part of the story, but yeah, I'm. Not, I don't want to. It's it's a longer story, and we've already talked enough about poop. Well, about shit. Well, we said. Well, to to continue, I think some people might want to hear an update. Like, how do we feel the first week of the diet? I know you already said you feel like shit. I kind of, I have more information than that, but. So going through the diet, like the first two days, didn't really notice it. Third and fourth day, I was, we were, I was sick already. And so were you. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. We got the, uh, the Mormon flu from uh, the Western Hunting Expo mm. and felt like shit. Anyways, I, I had the diarrhea and uh, Luke's, Luke's he's, got the, he's, he's on the toilet now on Friday. <laughs> He calls him into the bathroom. Why you call me in the bathroom when you shitting? <laughs> <laughs> Friday is one of the best shows that nobody talks about anymore. That's right. That's right. It's a classic. It is. And there's a couple, there's a next Friday. Yeah, dude. Friday after next. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What the hell are we talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, that that carnivore diet. Tuesday or this week over the weekend, day three and four, dude. Just. Horrible diarrhea, like I just said. Day f- going into Monday, day five and six, I felt fine. Seven, yesterday, I felt kind of queasy, and this morning, I felt really nauseous. Like I, I joked on the live feed, I may be pregnant. But have you have you had to do any like physical exertion so far? I hiked the dogs to the blocks once, and I hiked the dogs on a trail, and uh, I didn't really notice any problems with that. Really, yeah, really. That's slow. really what I'm curious about. Really slow, really slow pace. Didn't really feel any, I mean, I'm fat and out of shape and felt winded, but I didn't feel tired or fucking bonking. Hmm. So, how about you? Uh, you know, felt like shit had the Rona heavy coming into this, you know, leakage in the back, like the whole back of my face, you know, your whole, uh, there's a name for that system, like your sinuses. Yeah. It's like your sinus system, but it goes from your ears to your nose behind your eyes. There's all these cavities and shit back there. So that was just all full of crap. Um, was already feeling weak. So it didn't help too much. So yeah, I had a, I had like an entire chocolate pudding pie the night before we started. So I had some carbs for the first few days. Um, I think the I think the the big hump everybody talks about getting over has to do with your body being hydrated. Mm-hmm. I think once you lose the carbs, I think the carbs hold on to water a lot. Just like if you eat, you know, like me a twelve pack of donuts or whatever, you know, you, you hold on to a lot of water for a few days. If you don't have a few days without carbs, all of a sudden you start peeing like crazy. Well, that's yeah. all the water in your body. Yeah. <clears throat> Once you don't have those carbs to hold on to the water, you're, I don't know what holds it in. It's the minerals and the um, the electrolytes that we're taking. It's just some type of different system. And I think finally uh, my pee switched from like this neon fucking yellow to a regular color uh, yesterday. And yesterday I felt great. And today I felt great. Mm-hmm. Great meaning. So we went to the gym both mornings. Uh, it takes about an hour and a half to get the same workout we just used to do in about an hour. I uh, got to wait longer between sets. It feels like the muscle's not ready. In the same amount of time it used to be. And we used to put, like, I'd put sugar in my water at the gym. So you'd just be squigging on water in between sets and keeps you going. Um, well, yeah, probably running like 75% energy, I imagine. Really? Yeah, not feeling like uh, crazy clear, but but what I'm used to, like, you know, cognitively, like brain function. Feeling yeah. pretty good. It seems to be, a, and I've uh, both of us have watched and read of ungodly amount of stuff about carnivore now mm-hmm. and it seems to be like that first two to three weeks is like an up and down in that cognitive and just how you feel like physically and it's funny to me because this guy hit it he goes you'll eat something one day and it'll be the best tasting thing and then the next day you won't like Can't it fucking eat it well you made you made a good brisket you gave me some brisket and i ate it the first day and i was like Ugh. i didn't the fat was like too much i don't know what it yeah. was like not gagging me but it just didn't Tastes great. And I ate it last night, dude. I pounded that sucker. Yep, and yep. it was like freaking awesome. Yeah. So it does have like an ebb and flow to it. Yeah. So the things that, so we have been getting these little bouts of nausea though, right? Like, so pulling into the fucking shop this morning for like five minutes, I got, felt like I was going to throw up. That seems to be coming and going. I still think it has to do with hydration. I uh, went to the gym day f- four. I think it was day four or five. I haven't thrown up since my drinking days. I've been sober for 11 years now. And I got so fucking nauseous, I threw up in the driveway, barely made it home. Mm-hmm. And that was weird. That whole fucking morning and day was really weird. But so there's some weird shit happening in my body for sure. Yeah. And if you're reading another thing where it talked about how your delivery of electrolytes and minerals and vitamins, and it all changed with this because 
most of that we're getting from, you know, not just processed food, but we're eating a lot of this. Our body become accustomed to what we had our diet on for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. basically. And basically you're shocking your body and it has to pull not necessarily different vitamins and minerals, but it has to pull them at different times and from different places. So you're not getting the same feed of electrolytes, vitamins, and minerals as you were on your previous crappy or good diet. Yeah. I know that I've never been ketosis in my life and we're in pretty good ketosis now. And, uh, yeah, I think your body's just figuring out how to do what it was meant to do. Or, you know, back in the day you may have eight caveman may have eight, you know, a fucking lion or something that they killed. And then the next day they had potato. I don't know, but your body's used to switching back and forth. I think it's just mine is not used to it. Gotcha. I don't well, know. and I've dropped, you can talk about you dropped instantly, but I started at two thirty two, and this morning I was two twenty four. And I have drank, like yesterday I drank a fucking gallon of water, so yep. I can't say that I'm still losing water weight. So yep. I don't know where it's coming from, if it's fat or muscle, but it's definitely not just water weight. I think the water for me is settled out. I started out at 276, went all the way down to 262. This was the feeling shit phase. And the last two days that I felt good, my weight is back to 268 both days. I think that's all that I lost all the water. And then most of the, you know, half the water has come back. Mm -hmm. And is why I'm feeling good. I think that, and of course, this is all just fucking skeptical bullshit from us, you know, just yeah. trying to figure out like, I'm, I'm pretty in tune. We, we've been right. working out for a while now, so I know how much I lift on which, which exercises. So I can have so like a baseline to judge from. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you hike all the time, like going to the fucking, you would have felt something if you went up to the blocks, you know, like you said, you went slow and you're out of shape already. Yeah. There's, maybe there's not a baseline there, but. But I know like I wasn't the slowest I've ever been up there. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle. Yeah. And I had the dogs and I was just going at a pace. And one thing I thought that was interesting is breathing hard. Yeah. I'm breathing hard because I really hadn't done anything since hunting season. But I noticed like my heart rate, because you have it on your your watch, my heart rate was like consistently low and just, just a one off. Could be anything, but I'm going to watch it. It was like eight to 10 beats slower than it usually is. Oh, really? So I'll, that, that's like bro science, right? But it's yeah. one off. Who knows off your, my watch could be out of calibration. Yeah. But it consistently, when I'm climbing up, it's like pretty like, you'd call it zone three or zone four. Mm -hmm. And it's, my heart rate's usually about 120 hiking up that hill. It's fucking and it was, low. And it was, yeah, I always have a low heart rate. They, when I was in the military, I said, you have a whole, whole right, especially for my body size. And it was like 115, 118, 112, 110, like the whole way up there. So I'll watch that. And see. If I was breathing hard towards the top, dude, my shit will get as high as 180. Oh, I went to the blocks. Going to the yeah. top, I'll get up to the 150, 145, okay. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that, the bottom part's the easy part. Mm -hmm. That last fucking four or 500 yards is a bitch. Yes, yeah, some of the stuff that we've ate, I, uh, so I made some briskets for Ryan and I. <laughs> um, is that, where is that at? Luke. Fucking Luke. A, is that what the smell is? You smell it right now. Look. I can He's hear it. Grilling. That was the sound in the fucking headphones. He is making bacon. Out it was bacon fat sizzling in the main office. Luke, you better not eat all that damn bacon. You can't oh, be showing man. us that shit and eating it all. Dude, I heard a sound come in the headphones yes. for a minute, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" It's him out there fucking cooking bacon. If there's one particular food item that will get me through this, it's fucking <laughs> this bacon. bacon. Like people say, like uh, Streepy said, he tried it for three weeks and he couldn't even look at a ribeye. Yeah, I'm like ah. Maybe with bacon, but we'll see. I don't think I'll get there. Ribeyes are tasty. Rib We've had uh, baby back ribs. I made those briskets. We've been eating on that breakfast. So usually in the morning we're doing, uh, as a family, again, my whole family is doing it, eggs and some meat, elk sausage, um, brisket, whatever the fuck it is, taco meat, mm -hmm. um, just basically doing eggs and that with cheese, a lot of cheese and a lot of sour cream. Sour cream has been helping me eat almost anything. I've been... Mm -hmm. We had fucking baby back ribs last night. I was dipping them in sour cream. That sounds funny, but until you until you're overdone on meat, you really don't know what's going to get it done for you. I bought two of the big sour cream things from Costco. Yes, <laughs> last night you've been working when, it. When I was fucking eating those fucking the brisket, I was yep. dipping the brisket Just in there right into the sour cream. Yep, and I bought a thing of cottage cheese. But here's the thing: is what I can tell from my little bro science research on the carnivore. You can overdo it with cottage cheese. You can. Because it does have carbs. It does. So I've been taking little tiny, like fucking, maybe like a two and a half fucking tablespoons. Yep. That's about it. Yeah. Kind of measure. I don't measure anything else. I just, as much meat as I can possibly fucking eat. Yeah. And the sour cream. But you do have to watch yourself on the carbs you get from cottage cheese. Definitely. You want to stay in that ketosis. Yeah. Ribs, brisket, uh, burgers. We've been taking a handful of shredded cheese on the, on the electric flat top griddle. 
and drop it down and that and that melts down into almost a tortilla and you just continue letting it crisp on one side and put some type of meat in the middle with your sour cream. Mm -hmm. uh, the boy's doing a lot of hot sauce. How do you get, this was on rock side, the little carnivore thing. I think it's on rock. How do you get that not to stick when you flip that? So you don't actually flip it. You, I just let that, pan, that ma it's a big mound of cheese, dude. And when you first start, when it's shredded, it's like this thick. What, and like then it melts diameter? Down. What diameter are we talking? Six inch. Six inch. Six, oh, a real six inch. On a big flat. Not an Avery six inch. <laughs> You mean a dude six? A real six. <laughs> a true six. That looks like eight to me. <laughs> so it, 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 you, you literally put it there and just don't fucking touch it. And then as it starts to melt down, it gets these little dimple dots in the cheese as, oh, as it's Luke, melting. Oh, you're the man. Oh, fucking bacon arrived. You have to let the whole thing get those dots. And then you just start easing the spatula under the edges. Mm -hmm. And the, the trick is that as a taco, you never actually flip it. You put your meat in the middle right there. Keep it creamy, juicy in the middle. And you're only flipping the half over and then take your, so as soon as you get that first edge up, you literally pick it up and roll it over and then get your spatula, ease it under the other side. And then it's fucking crispy hard on both sides and yeah. you, you never cooked the inside of the cheese. So you put it up there and how long do you wait before you start putting shit on it? You have to look at it. So these, the, from the out, it melts from the outside in and these little white, like uh, bubbles are popping. And until that melts all the way into the middle, then put your meat. When you quit seeing the bubbles. It's not that you quit seeing the bubbles. It's just that it looks the same from the outside edge to the inside. Okay. Don't let the inside look any different than the outside, and it's all consistent. You're talking a minute, 30 seconds average? No, I'm talking five minutes. Oh. Five, six, seven minutes so for this fucking... smoking? And that's when the griddle's at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you it doesn't spray, smoke. Do you spray any fucking no, shit dude, on there? No, dude. There is enough fat in the cheese. You don't got to put nothing. Like, it's dry when you put the it's cheese like down. It's like running cheddar cheese, like from Costco? Yeah, we get the the big shredded bags. I don't know. It's not just cheddar. There's some Monterey. There's some white. and You mix it all together? It's already in there all mixed. Okay. From Costco. From Costco. And one fucking giant handful, usually, and then just smooth it out to six inches. It all melts down. Leave it there for five, six minutes. Put your meat. Flip it over. And do so. I'll put... We did taco meat, ground beef taco meat the other night mm -hmm. with uh, sour cream, and we we crunch up the fucking pork rinds and put that on there. It gives you like some extra crunch in the middle. Mm -hmm. And like I said, Mason's been using the shit out of some taco sauce. Yeah, that that is the best I've seen. Like cheat code because you yeah. got it. You're we're not all Ryan Lampers. There's a little cheat codes of cheating your it body fucking, into thinking something is. It hits that too. Yeah, like you. As soon as you take the first bite, you're like. <laughs> Almost like a carb. Yes. Uh, and then hardworking Hunter, he was taking, like I told you, he was basically crunching up fucking pork grinds, yeah. melting cheese, burger, and sour cream. That was his little snack. Yeah, so at the same time that he made those ground beef tacos, I just took the beef. This is seasoned high-fat beef. Like, we bought the 25% fat shit at, at Walmart. The seasoned fat beef, cheddar cheese, sour cream, saw, hot sauce if you want. And uh, and just eat that with a spoon was also good while you're eating your pork rinds, you mm -hmm. know. So kind of same idea, but it's a good taste. It makes you think you're having Mexican food. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. American Mexican food. What I, the biggest thing that I've taken away from this diet is, A, I, I do think I can do it. We're fucking 82 days left, you know, no big deal. Fuck. But like Ryan said, eating's a habit. And you think it's like smoking. Smoking is more, you, people can break the nicotine habit, but the, the habit of fucking putting that thing in your mouth to smoke it. Same thing. We always are busy looking for food. He said, and you got to ask yourself, are you hungry when you're doing that? Or your no, mind thinks that. Definitely not. And I haven't been. I have not been hungry. So. I would say that. So, so definitely in the middle of the day, if you eat a big meal, like I'm talking like six eggs and meat in the morning. You're not hungry in the middle of the day until around three, four or five o'clock. And then you're hungry again for dinner. Uh, after dinner is where I get fucked. Like as soon as I have my dinner meal, I start because that was my sugar time. Dude, the, I, if I bought donuts for the whole crew, I wouldn't touch a donut all fucking day here at the shop because I don't like the donut. I like mm -hmm. the donut in the evening, and that's getting me bad. Like the cravings. What? But it doesn't really matter because after you eat dinner, you usually go to bed like it's four o'clock, eight o'clock. What time do you eat dinner? Uh, we've been trying. Well, it's been a few different times, but somewhere between five and seven. Gotcha. Yeah, I feel that you can eat later now. I do get a little heartburn if I eat two. If I eat at seven and I go to bed at eight, I'll get some heartburn. But mm. I don't think it matters as much what time you eat in the in the evening with this diet. 
Yeah. Because everything is ultra processable by your body. It's not a bunch of shit that's going to sit there for fucking 20 hours and ferment. Yeah. And I guess you got to, we got to tell the listeners, we're not on a carnivore diet. We're on a animal based diet. All Yeah. All the dairies, um, even like the A2. So Ryan Lampers mentioned A2 milk. Robert just told me that if you go to Super One, local grocery store of ours, they have full fat, unprocessed, unpasteurized milk in glass bottles at Super Ones. Really? From local sources. Really? Yeah. And you take the glass bottle, the gallon bottle, you bring it back and all that shit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check that out. I'm not like a huge, unless I can fucking put some cinnamon toast crunch in that bitch. I'm not a huge milk fan. Yeah. So. I don't know. But it could change it up, right? Like if you, because yeah. you can't have soda or monsters or Red Bulls or anything else, right? So if you have that craving for something different than water. Yeah. Might help. And Ryan said he like, I think it was Ryan said he would <clears throat> sneak in like LaCroix because they're pretty much zero, zero, zero is like a treat. Mm -hmm. And the problem is if I do a gateway drug, <laughs> it's going to want me to do other things. Yeah. So. Uh, I've talked to uh, another friend of mine that comes in the shop all the time. He's been on it for 90 days. In total, between before he started and after, he's up to 100 pounds. He's dropped 100 his name pounds. Out. He's dropped 100 pounds. Yeah. Um, his name is also Jake, so you know who I'm talking about. Dropped over 100 pounds. Over 100 pounds. Like over 100 pounds. 105 and yeah. I didn't know that. So I asked him, like, my, my, my first question is, is what is, after 90 days, what is your favorite thing to eat? Because there's got to be something that ended up being your go-to. Uh, he buys the rotisserie chicken that's in a bag from Costco, the shredded shit. And he browns it up, and I think he said cheese, and he uses ranch. And it got me thinking about ranch as far as it's it's basically all milk fat. There's going to be some other shit in there, and there might be some sugar, but I might try to find some sugar-free sash sucralose ranch. Maybe try to add that in there. I don't know. It's cheating. It's a fucking cheating, yes, but. Enhance your shooting experience with stocky stocks. Are you tired of struggling with mediocre rifle stocks that hinder your performance? Imagine having a high-quality rifle stock that not only enhances your accuracy, but also provides superior strength in a lightweight build. Stocky Stocks offers a wide range of premium rifle stocks manufactured with hand layup carbon fiber construction, a patented carbon fiber AccuBlock, and multiple finish options. Whether you're a long-range shooter or a hunting enthusiast, our stocks are perfect for you. Experience unmatched precision and durability with Stocky Stocks. We provide stock installation instructions, technical support, and guidance to help you choose the right stock for your rifle. Upgrade your shooting game today with Stocky Stocks. It's like, are you accomplishing the goal you set out to do? Yes. I think, I think so. Are. Like Ryan, I love Ryan Lampers, but that dude is an outlier. Yeah. He was fucking strict before he got on the carnivore. Oh, yeah. So. That's what I tell you. We can't, we can't, we can't judge how our body reacts the first few weeks to him because he was already in shape. Well, Clean listen. diet. And Ryan Luke was talking some mad shit about that mountain race, so yeah, he better buckle up and get over here and whip his little ass. It'd be a good race. That would be, uh, yeah. I asked him, and he goes, "He don't have a chance. <laughs> you don't have a chance, Lukey." That's what he said. <laughs> Never know. I we we've seen guys that we know that run that whole fucking thing from the bottom to the top. There was a guy I seen that last season who had already run it once and was on his second way up. It was an ultra marathon runner. This was back. Before I even met you, uh, there was a dude. I saw him going up. I saw him coming down, and I went back two days later. Saw him going up, saw him coming down, and he was probably, I'm going to guess, low guess, mid-70s. And he was climbing to the top uh, three times a day. He was training to go. It wasn't Everest, but it was something like Everest. Huh. And he said he had climbed. This dude was... Not small, not fat, but he had trekking poles and he said he would do it three. And it was like the 50th time he'd been to the top. Wow. So it's like, out, and then you feel like you're like, well, what the fuck? I can barely do it once. I'm a big fucking pussy. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's a mind thing for sure. This is Canfield. It's 1800 feet straight up. No stops in 1.8 miles. Some spots are pretty steep. There's really no flat spot. Mm -mm. But. Made me think, damn, I can do this once, and he's doing it three times a day, and he's at, let's say, twice my age. Shit, yeah, people can run up that thing. 
Well, let's talk about guns at some point. Yeah, we can't. We talked about poop. We talked about diets. We're t- <laughs> we're kind of starting to fucking sound like fucking Mary Povich or Mari Povich. Oh, uh, we got to t- change the name of the fucking podcast. Yeah. Oprah fucking up in here. Oh no, no, <laughs> Big Mike, <laughs> Oprah. Good lord, <laughs> totally different tangent. Okay, been getting lots of questions on the seven. Is there somebody out there? I don't know. There's a lot of noise. Luke's not doing a very good job of keeping no, people not. out of here. No, he's not. Uh, little distractions out in the shop today. Okay, a lot of hubbub around. You said you're going to build a 657 PRC. Oh, it's fucking built. It's, it's chambered. It's ready to go. Yep. I said I was going to build a 67 PRC. Yours is improved. Yours is a 657 PRC improved. Yep. Mine's not. It's just a 67 PRC. And then I think they plus peed it too. Mine? Mine. You got to be fucking kidding me. Well, because I wanted to go up to the 6.5 SOM Improved plus P. That's what we have data from. Now we have a 6.57 PRC Improved plus P. I didn't realize that Jess's gun yeah. is P- plus P. Yeah. And it's shooting a 20-inch barrel at 3050, 156. 156, 3050. You ever have much powder? Uh, 68, 69, mm-hmm. somewhere right there. Interesting. I should have had a real number for that. But well, once we do these two we're talking about, we'll have some real numbers for you. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, and, and, and Hank has brought up that the the four to one rule, and I've heard the four to one rule. We did that whole thing a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot all about it. Basically, it's 4% more case capacity gives you 1% more velocity. Yeah. So if, and I'm talking on this, the 6UM versus the 6.5. The yep. six, six, the six, seven PRC. We're going to put his equation to the test when I have some yes. real data here. So you're going to have two sixes and we will have H2O capacities and I'll have two six fives with H2O capacities. Yeah. And here's the caveat to all this. Cause I called the four people I know that have six UMs that I trust. Oh. And, and I've already asked Hank what he thought about this. And he said that, yeah, that that's, that's cool. I personally have never seen this. So, 20 inch barrels. These are all four 20 inch barrels. Mine was 30. Mine was 33. No, sorry, 3290. 20 inch barrel 115 DTEC. Hanks is 3250. The other two are both almost 3350. Hmm. There's a fucking hundred feet of variance there. I, I would have to ask. Powder and six, all sixty-six grain, five seventy. They tell me they're sixty. No odd. shit. Yeah. So barrels. There, there's three have been chambered here. The only outlier, no. Sorry, three of the four have been chambers here. Are they all ace? No, they're not all aces. They're two benchmarks and ace, and then I don't know what the other barrel oh. is. It's like how I know there's like some five R's or some six, you know, Ballard, but. It kind of skews the whole fucking process because now my average, you got to go off the average because I don't think Hank's lying and I know that Tim's not lying. So we're we're at 3,300, but we have fucking 50 feet either way. Mm-hmm. So when you build yours and I build this one, they're just one-offs and is that a super fast one or not? Even, even one barrel to the next built identically, you know, there is... There is velocity variance just because of the way the barrel is. And it's hard to, for people to believe that because I, I can agree with 50 but we're at a hundred. And what mm. is what is Hank's barrel? Is it the same as mine? A benchmark number five, right? You guys cut it down to twenty inches for him. I think so. Yeah, and the, they're all twenties. The only difference is the groove. Some are five R, some may maybe a four R, and I know one's a mm. six. But that's it's a like, lot. It's like my twenty inch three hundred rum. We've tried to duplicate that twice and won't get anywhere near those velocities. It's a hundred feet per second slower. So I have a carbon six twenty inch barrel. It's a Sendero light. Eight no nine twist shoots two fifteens at thirty one hundred, and the other two rifles they've tried to duplicate my rifle from have not shot that fast. Been a hundred feet per second slower. <laughs> Sometimes you just get a fast one. Yeah, it kind of like throws a kink into all of it, to my mm. opinion, because now you don't off a of one off. I'm going to build this one. It, it it's going to be a benchmark. Is it a benchmark? No, it's an ace barrel. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> what, that is it slow? Is it fast? I don't know. You take like Kurt. Uh, Roscoe's and his is fucking retarded fast. Mm-hmm. It's a 24 incher, but it's shooting 3,500 feet per second. Yeah. So, whoa, that's, you know, they say 25 feet per inch and that sucker is way, it's 200, it's 50 feet per inch he's shooting. Huh. 
So it's maybe he's is, putting some special sauce in there. Sixty six grains of fight. Like they're all the same. But I what I what, another cool a caveat that'll be cool is I might the cool part that might happen in six UM is always going to be the baby that we you know the baby we need. But if there is something that'd be interesting to find out is if we can build the six seven PRC and run like a non like an H one thousand. Or you could yep. run a non five sixty something not as violent as five seventy and still get the velocity that you're looking for. Especially it's not improved. Yep. Yeah, and if you have something that's not double based like five seventy, might yes. get maybe a couple two three hundred rounds more barrel life. Yeah. So my goal this is going to be a twenty inch barrel. If it comes out in that average, you know, sub thirty three thirty uh, thirty three hundred or above thirty three hundred, I'll be happy. What are you missing for yours right now? They're doing it this weekend. They'll be ready. All the parts are here? Yep. And the Jessica, Jessica Brown said that the stock will be here today. Uh, if we end up building, if we get back there Tuesday and they got the mold, if Bring we build back. if we build mine, mm -hmm. if we do one like in person, if we build mine, then we can get that. That's all I'm waiting on. Well, I think what we should do is put the, we, we're having a blog on the new Shoot to Hunt website and we should put the 6UM versus the 6, 7 PRC, put all the stats and then put another blog post with the the uh your six five psalm improved against mm -hmm. the uh six five seven prc improved yep yep i'm gonna bring that one to africa i'm just gonna have them chamber i'm gonna have them laser the barrel seven prc I'll leave it alone he asked me if i was bringing a real gun like you were what are you bringing i told him i'm bringing the seven the six five seven prc plus the 300 rum I don't. I really think he's he's very anti six UM at this point. By he, we're talking about uh, Red Sand Safaris. We're going out to South Africa at the end of August to kill some various critters, including Ryan's going to shoot a giraffe. This is no different than Neil guy. I change people's minds every day. I think you bring it, and I don't know if you'll convince them to say, "Hey, let me shoot the giraffe with this," and and you be next to me with a big gun if you're uncomfortable. Here, here's the thing: I, if the way I look at it, if you make it bleed, it's yours. Yeah. If, it's going to work. I wholeheartedly believe in this gun. If it did. But you have no, you can't believe that you have no previous data on the animal itself. Haven't you ever seen fucking Predator? If this fucker bleeds, it can die. I'm just saying a giraffe, there are some animals that are tougher than others. I've seen a fucking mule deer run with a hole all the way through it. You can see sunlight through. Motherfuckers are killing them with arrows. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying you don't you don't really have like this. You have a lot of faith in the six UM. Well, he has he has a lot of he he doesn't have any faith, but he has. And I've asked him, oh. and he can come on. We can have him, we should have him on the podcast where we go. Uh -huh. What has he seen? Because have without witnessing it firsthand, have you ever thought you'd see that much bloodshot out of a fucking six no, millimeter bullet? Definitely not. I'm not. I'm not discounting it. What I'm saying is is that. Yes, the faith is there in the 6UM for devastating damage, but who knows how tough a giraffe is. It may not be a tough animal at all, I don't know. But it's we've, big. Neither of us have killed or seen one killed, so that's a big motherfucker. The question to ask him is, has he seen one killed with a 6? You know, maybe, maybe I, the giraffe maybe holds a place in my soul. You know, growing up, like seeing the land before time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this movie? Yes, yes. All right, well, I don't remember if it's that movie. There's a movie. And What's I, the little uh, sloth his name in there? I don't fucking remember. I'm about to go home and watch this movie now. Yeah. But there's a scene somewhere in a movie that feels cartoony to me where a, a brontosaurus dies. And as it's fallen, its neck kind of hits and does this rolly thing. And then the head slams. And when I think of a giraffe dying, that's what I see. Hmm. But anyways, back to the whole majestic thing, whatever. I don't, maybe, maybe certain animals are tied to something else in my memory. I don't like that. I don't know, but I'm not going to kill a giraffe. You don't have to. I'll do it for you. I know you will. I just think that. <clears throat> no, not it's... land before time. Open that. Oh, one. that's Ice Age. I was thinking. Not, of. not Sid. Ice Age. Fucking Sid is. I'm that not dude's talking name. about Ice Age. I'm talking about land before time, dude. If you've seen this cartoon, it's a cartoon movie. It is old. It might be 1980. Here we go. Yeah, put blow one of those up. That one. The original Land Before Time. Maybe get a date on it. I think it is that one that has that scene where the fucking brontosaurus, the neck falls as it's coming down, the head slams in the ground. 1988. That was close. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Really close. 
it's going to feed a <laughs> lot of locals. No, I get all that. It's not a. But going back to, th- there's no way that little bullet ain't going to penetrate enough. There, it's it'll have no problems getting through the draft. I'm not saying it's going to exit. And, and I say this all fucking naive. I've never fucking seen a draft in my life. This is what I'm saying. How, how thick is the draft? They're thick. That's what I'm saying. There's not actually a number. You could you could call. You could say, oh, big bull elk is is 24 inches thick. No, where where are you going to shoot them? They're less than 20. Maybe 18 thick. inches. Yeah. I'm going to shoot the motherfucker right behind the shoulder. I'm going to drop that thing. Yeah. So I'm going to bring the 300 rum and the 657 PRC that for customs purposes will just be labeled as a 7 PRC and then the brass will, the <laughs> brass mean, will match. I don't know if you tell their secrets. Yeah. They're gonna find but they, gonna, they ain't going to know. Yeah. They're, they're going to know. I guess you can bring <laughs> you can bring two rifles with 100 rounds each and they can't be the same cartridge. That's what you get to bring into uh, Joburg. Well, well, I guess we'll find out. I'm going to bring a 6UM and a, and a 6, 7 PRC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Neil will be happy with you. Uh, dude, Neil has got to learn that I'm not giving up. <laughs> I will say that, that once we get there, there you know there won't be anybody quite. I don't I don't know that he's experienced what he's going to experience. We'll just say that he yeah. sent us some pictures of some like uh, very milk and honey type of families, like kind of sitting around the fam the, the the table there at dinner. Yes, and then he was showing us. He's basically he was trying to show me what the females can do. So like Tanya and Jessica, oh, they can go see the elephants, so they can go on this little. Mm-hmm. Where they stir up some wildlife and let them see whatever. Well, they don't really know that both of our wives are killers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were going down to Stockies and uh, t- they asked Tanya, if, uh, we asked the women if they wanted to hunt. Tanya's like, yeah, I want to go shoot. We're going to go wife. kill pigs yeah. on a, like a, a, in like a swamp buggy. Yeah. Did you see the tires on that? Did you yeah. look at the picture good? Yeah. Had like those swamp buggy fucking tires and it's got this big shooting apparatus built up. That's going to be fun. It is. And it's like, it's, it will be interesting because it's it's kind of like I thought about this. We're looking for a web designer, web developer, uh-huh. and talking to some of these their kids. You know, I've, I'm fucking forty eight now. Most of these dudes are in their early twenties, mid twenties, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, me and me and Jake are aggressive. Like, if you would hear us talk, you'd almost think we're arguing sometimes, and uh-huh. it's just normal banter. Yeah. And it's like, this kid's going to come in. And then one particular kid I talked to yesterday, I'm like, whoo, he's going to get a learning experience of a lifetime, whether he knows it or not, and has nothing to do with web development. <laughs> this is this is not like a PC or OSHA type of work environment. No. no. You know, we're slinging words left and right. And yeah. That, and I've asked all of them, what do you, do you think about F-bombs? And it's, yeah. it's funny too, because I have asked the one dude, what, what does your spouse think about what you're going to do? Because... You get into a situation where if the spouse isn't into the two A or the freaking shooting of animals, they can be a problem. Yep. I just wrote uh we're looking for a rifle builder for unknown munitions too, and I just wrote the job description. It says must be shooting and hunting friendly. Otherwise you're not gonna get along with the other fifteen people in the building. No, you're gonna kind of get ostracized and you're you will be the odd man out because the name of the game in both sides, shoot to hunt, UM rocks, any our life revolves around hunting and weapons. So 99% of the conversations in your off time or on your breaks revolves around hunting and weapons. No. Yeah. So it's very interesting. No, you're not going to fit in. In fact, we don't even, we don't really think about, we're always, of course, weapons safe, but you don't think about weapons the same way other people do because we literally have weapons. That, there's weapons in the cabinet. There's weapons in this room. There's weapons in the next room. There's a lot of weapons in the next room. And they're just fucking everywhere and they're all around you all the time. You really don't think. It doesn't affect us the same way I think it affects other. Like if you get a a born and raised Californian come in here, right, and 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 every single motherfucker in this building is either open carrying or concealed carrying. Everybody's got yeah. a gun on them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little different, and it kind of hits you a little different. But yeah, I was sitting there the other day, and I was looking at all your your workers, and I was and then Luke, and then I was like, motherfucker comes in here to rob you, he better come fucking hot because he's gonna get fucked up. Yes. We even have, we, we have weapons staged at all the doors. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are ready to go. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's interesting culture and it's a tough culture because in the marketing side of this, you're, we're shadow banned by lots of companies mm-hmm. getting way off topic. But anyways, that's the goal with those two guns. There's been a lot of hubbub on Rockslide lately about that. And I think that, uh, I think it'll be interesting. I think we'll be surprised by one or the other. Don't know yeah. which. I'm going to get numbers with that 156, but I think I might shoot the 147 ultimately out of that other one. 
so that we can have some set because we're going to kill a lot of shit with that song and proof still and we're going to kill shit with this other one so what barrel twist is your eight they're both eight yeah and they're all both aces yes so they should have no problem twisting them yeah there's a little problem with the four grooves i keep hearing with the ldms oh yeah this is still six groove yeah 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 i don't think uh It'll be interesting if you go away from the six five song. Well, uh, what kind of paint job are you going to put on this new rifle? Damn, I, is it the green rock stock? Yeah, but oh. I'm, I'm going to do some. It's got that. What do you guys call them? That uh, fluting you guys have? Ratchet. Ratchet. It's got the ratchet. It's, oh, dude, put a matchy matchy green down in those ratchet. I really want to do whatever will irritate Mike. I think he's got Audrey doing a little bit of that taping now, so he might not be as flustered. But yeah, dude, if you do a matchy matchy green or the rock side green down that stone glacier rifle, the giveaway rifle really popped because that blue almost looked electric down in the fucking with the black background. Yeah. Really fucking popped. Yeah. And I do that the stone glacier looked fantastic. Yes. And I almost wonder if you could do a design where you could take that green and you could do the same thing to make the rock slide logo in the in the uh butt. Oh, you can. But you'd have to darken it with something else. Well, you'd have to still do kind of the tear job with the carbon, right? And then uh, do the same thing with the rock slide logo. It's taped off, but then you'd have to have kind of black or, you know, some some dark color all around everywhere else with some sponge work. And mm -hmm. it could be just like the Stone Glacier where everything's coming through. It'll just be that green carbon. Interesting. Yeah. What are you going to do with yours? I've been thinking a lot of it. So we have a, a rifle on the table here. Uh I'll just to give the first name of the customer's name is Carl, and this is the second or third or fourth kind of theme job that we've done for him. Uh, that is a Nimrod stock with a Vesper action and a giant steel octagon barrel, and we've done it in a Venom theme. It's got Venom's logo on one side of the buttstock and an actual Venom face that was hand done by Audrey on the other side, and then it's got Venom's tentacles kind of coming up around the rifle with a bunch of airbrushing. And come out pretty badass. If you guys are watching on YouTube there, obviously it's in the, the middle of the table here, but the Venom head came out awesome. Every, everything about it is pretty badass. So his theme jobs, his requests kind of got me thinking about, you know, maybe doing something different. We have a lot of good paint jobs, but. That is an interesting looking gun. The pretty paint, cool. The free-handed paint job that Audrey did on that is <clears throat> yes. unreal. Yes, in fact, Carl was just, uh, he was just DMing me. I've, I haven't seen my rifle yet. I said, it's on the podcast table. Yeah, what what barrel is that? That's an interesting flute. Yep, just octagon fluting. That's just an eight-sided stop sign kind of look. Straight grind. It's a 300 normal plus P. He's going to uh, murder some things with it. He's a big guy. Yeah, and that, that you never seen that pattern before with that color. Yep. It looks good, really good. It's got like the red, white, and blue kind of Spider-Man colors, you know, with the, like I said, the Venom logo and the Venom head. Pretty badass. Dude, it is. It's, that paint, <laughs> she's, she's amazing. <clears throat> I can paint that if I wanted to. Yeah. So is that, like that custom paint, speaking of that, you got a new oven, so you can up your Cerakote game. There we go. But is that paint, like how much does that cost? Um, so usually that'll be, that would be 550 would be a complete rifle without a scope. Um, that would be for a standard type of uh stencil job. Basically this, I mean, she spent a few, we're just going to charge a few extra hours. She spent a few extra hours labor wise. Um, uh, but theme jobs can be very complicated depending on what you want to do. I know there were some things that she did and redid, you know, she wasn't happy with, but, uh, it's a little bit more. Yeah. You gotta spend a little more time on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. But if you have a theme build in mind, I think we've done a Harry Potter rifle for this guy, and he was also the T-Rex killer. Oh, yeah. T yeah, which came out sick. It did. That was an awesome it, idea. It also it came out, like, way, way different than I was thinking in my brain what it come out with. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I it, guess you could build, like, a giraffe killer. Yeah. It's just, it's gonna, dude, it's going to work. I could have a big, long neck, have the head go all the way down the thing. Uh, <laughs> giraffe killer. Oh, fuck. Uh, the uh, Blaine, what did he say today? He said, after the Africa trip, we're going to call you the giraffe picker. Oh, yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> Blaine, Blaineisms. Yeah. The giraffe pricker. I didn't know exactly where he's going with that. Um, speaking of shit coming up, bear season's right around the corner. 
If you want a slam dunk bear hunt and training, we have two spots left for the training and bear hunt over in Montana with the Abasorki Beartooth Wilderness Outfitters. 75,000 acres of private ranch land. This will be the second week, so that it'll be the second week after opener. It's a light snow season. They're going to be out. They're going to be walking. It's going to be fun. Uh, what's the noon? Uh, Hank? You get three days with Hank? So three days with Hank to start, uh, and then three days of hunting. All your food and lodging is included. It is... It's something like April 22nd to 28th. Uh, all the food, like I said, food and lodging included. Everything is there. And, uh, of course, you get to hang out with Ryan and me and Hank. Could be a good or bad thing. Really depends. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, to, to me, is it's a it's an abbreviated, the biggest difference between this course and our full our full five days in um, in Montana in June Three days is abbreviated. You're going to learn the fundamentals. The thing you're really going to miss out if you want to come back for the five-day classes, there's a lot more angle and wind stuff. We are going to do that in the three-day. It's just abbreviated. And we'll end with any of this. The more time you can pull the trigger, the more you're going to learn. But I don't see a way you don't leave this three days without being better. And then you jump right. The cool part is you take that skill set you just figured out and learned. Or if you're already a, you know a pretty a good shooter you're going to learn stuff that's going to make you a better shooter and then bam you're hunting bears mm -hmm. and talking to when we went over there to shoot the elk they, they had a guy there named cliff cliff right mm -hmm. and he talked about multiple bears that people passed up and they're high on color phases so if your dream is to shoot a color phase bear a color phase bear this is your place and as far as practicing on a species practicing shooting skills that you've learned bears don't fucking sit still they always seem to be on the move unless they're you know Mm -hmm. If they're eating bear bait or whatever, but they always seem to be moving from one place to another and can be, you know, rather difficult to stay on target, things like that. So it's a, yes. good, it's a good test of your skills. It is. And the, the th bears don't stop unless they're coming to a bait. But if you've ever spot and stalked bears, it's like trying to shoot a rutten buck. Mm -hmm. They grab, no, take off. They grab some food and walk off. And then they'll do weird shit. They'll, they'll be walking one way and they'll decide, I don't want to go this anyway. And you'll never see this with a, with a non-predator. They'll be walking one way and they're like, ah, I'm going to go back the other way. And they'll just flip around like, like on a dime and walk back the other way. Yep. So it, it is a good challenge. And it, yep. the course matches bear hunting in my, in spot and stock bear hunting, because it literally is designed to take quick ethical shots from zero to 600 yards. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ha ha's rolling around. We got two for fucking two months. Two yeah, months out. As a matter of fact, you, you got to get your ass out there and start peddling fucking brochures. I've already took him to three places. Really? Nice. Uh, we just added mm, Revic. Revic Optics. Revic Optics is coming. So, and I believe from all in what I've heard, you'll be able to buy, look through all their products, their yep. scopes. Their, they make one of the best range finding scopes on the market. Yep. Reno Rifle Co. is coming, and we may or may not to get to see a, a new tent design. Yes. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, some pannier designs. Pannier designs. What else? A few, if, we got a few new shooting bags on the way. Yeah. If you're a llama guy or a goat guy, we're going to have some bags developed by llama and goat guys. <laughs> when you were going through all this the other day, I was like, man, we are like heckle and jekyll. We are all over fucking, the Oh, map. yeah. All over, <laughs> all, all over the fucking place. Well, it's it's our passions. Like, we love, obviously, like weapons. We obviously like bolt guns. But we also, it encompasses hunting, which... You have to have stuff to go into the backcountry. Yeah. So why not? We are going to probably make a tent. And if you've looked at all the stuff I've been doing, Justin Stark made one of the best, I would say, livestock, lightweight livestock tents, meaning you need goats, llamas, or horses and mules to pack it. Mm -hmm. You could pack it. And Justin said that he, Tim and his buddy both packed one in. Mm -hmm. The thing weighs six pounds total, yeah. but it's like a fucking condo for two and it's still plenty of room for three with the stove. Yeah. So it's, I walked into it and I was like, why has nobody made this? I think the big difference that I saw was that, you know, unlike let's say a TP style design, you almost lose those, those outer couple feet mm -hmm. where the fucking TP is so close to the ground. Nobody's doing anything with that. Yes. You basically boxed it off to make it feel much more livable. So much more roomy. And it's, he's, I think he's six, three, about your height, six, mm -hmm. three. And so he goes, well, every time I go into a tent, he goes, I'd walk one foot away from the middle and I'd be, my head would be hitting shit. Yeah. And there's a couple other tents on the market that are, that are great. But the one in particular, this matches up to it's way, this one's way more streamlined. We don't have a name for it yet. He calls it the confluence, but I don't like that name. So we're going to have to come up with a catch. What does that mean? What is that? Luke, what does confluence mean? It's the, it's the meaning of two different rivers where they meet together. Oh, 
the confluence of these two rivers. I guess I should have said, what does that mean? I yeah. Know. So anyways, he designed it for taller people, but dude, for a short fellow like me, it's like a mansion hmm. and it has two, it does have two poles. You can use sticks and uh, more to come on that. But I'm excited because at first I was like, ah, I don't know if that'd be a big seller, but now I'm thinking once people see it. Like you said, being all over the place, when you said tent, I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean tent? Oh, tent. it's the best tent I've ever been. I know you've been in a lot of tents in your life. So I was like, eh. Well, a TP, we'll he's right. Even for me, yeah. I'm only five, like five, eight. You fucking move outside that two feet and your fucking heads into a fucking Yeah, you, wall. Lo- you lose all that shit. And then, yep. of course, with the uh, condensation and everything else, you're trying to avoid hitting the inside of the tent at all costs. Don't touch it. Yeah, you don't want to fucking touch it. So then you're, you, then you even move a little bit further away. So you might be losing three feet. Yep. And I've dicked around with cam. There's just no way to get a canvas tent light enough to where I want to take it. Yeah. To where this, I'll, I can deal with a little moisture, moisture, you know, a little bit of condensation if I have a wood stove. And there's no reason you can't take the wood stove with this, mm-hmm. a lightweight wood stove. But this thing is, its competitors have more stakes, more wind, and way more apt to be knocked down in the wind. Mm. I've used the competitor, and I don't want to bring it up till we actually have a tent in our hand, and I can make damn sure what I'm saying is right. But no. for what I'm seeing, for staying in it for basically, I think it was about eight nights, it's going to- It was some cold nights, too. Huh? One of them was, yeah, negative 15, negative 20. Uh, and this this thing is roomy. That's all I'm going to say. Did you see that, uh, I think it was Peaks Design had a new stove out there. Peaks has a new stove. Uh, Argali has a new stove. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I've not messed with either one, but I like the looks of both of them. I like the looks of, I'm not pay favorites, just at, at first blush, they say. Yeah. The, the, I like Brad's, but for me, if I'm going to take horses or mules or goats, I'm going to take the fucking um, Winterwell stove, the folding TI, because oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have to bolt anything together. That's the one thing. I have one of those popular name stoves and putting that motherfucker together is the worst job. it is it's already a pain to ask because you know you're gonna have to roll up the chimney or the stove pipe and you're gonna get black shit all over you yeah gonna get soot all over you well that that winter well and it's it's i don't know if it's a less great it's thicker t- titanium but it doesn't warp as much i actually think it's lesser like you know, day grade four or five mm-hmm. i think it's a lesser grade titanium but it's thicker yeah so it doesn't seem to warp as much because it's not that thin and i can literally put that up to get and then this is only the couple of stoves I've tried to screw together. I can have that stove up and running in three minutes and it takes me about 10 with all the other ones mm-hmm. with all the fucking wires or fucking wing nuts. Or I whatever. put some of those damn cut proof gloves in with mine just because like you said, the soot and fucking getting cut on short well, edges. And, and like when we went in Montana, yeah. I bet you if you would have had a, uh, the winter well, it's the skyline TI stove from yeah. golly. Yeah. If you would have had a winter well folding, you would have put it up because I've been in the same situation where it ain't worth my time. No. If it's if the weather's like right on the cusp, it was, and yep. we didn't fucking set it up. It just sat in the middle of the tent, taking up room because there was three of us in that small teepee, and yeah, we yep. didn't set it up. Yeah, so that winter well, I can literally have timed it. I can have it up in three minutes, and the other one takes about ten. Didn't they send that to you for a review or something? Yep, we did two different reviews. They make a they make a small one and a bigger one. I'm gonna get the bigger one too, because uh-huh. then you can put I think twenty inch log in there. Well, maybe if that's your preferred one, maybe we ought to try to carry those. Yeah, the problem that I hate about them, the fucking problem is I wish we could figure out American manufacturer because they're Chinese. Oh. That's the only knock on them. They're, huh. they're well put together, like a lot of, you know, people knock on China, but there is, I mean, fucking these phones we all talk on every day are Chinese built. Yeah, yeah. So it, but I do think if we brought it over here, it would double the price is the mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. But dude, it is snazzy. It is snappy, especially when it's cold and you're tired and you get to the camp and you've hiked all the way in there and you want to get that fucker up. Hey, especially when you got one of those nice boxes full of neatly packed fucking sticks ready to burn. Is so, that what you're talking about? So we take, <laughs> I've never seen this before in my 30 years of fucking backcountry hunting. I have never fucking seen a dude bring in a box. Like let's say a big- Five boxes. Five boxes, like a shoe, big shoe box yeah. full of kindling. Now the Kinlin, this is perfectly packaged, symmetrical, perfectly sized fucking, they were like 14 inches long, maybe 12, 14 inches. And they were, they were packed in there tight and they were lightweight. And what did I say when you brought those fucking started up right right now, brought them into this office. And I said, what kind of fucking retard brings this? But you know what? I was damn fucking glad we had them together. We didn't pack them in. The llamas packed them in. Yeah. And that's something to say too, is that a lot of times going in, you have some extra room because you plan on bringing an elk or something out. Right. So it was that extra room. 
uh, that we filled up with all the wood and yeah, we did. Me and Hank were sitting in the other tent, and Jake and Mason and Luke and the other one. We don't want to tell them, but this is fucking the way to do it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh shit! I got some pictures of that. I had to post some stuff up. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we, but you also didn't bring. So we packed all our food, and Jake and Mason eat, especially Mason eat the shit that I want to eat, and uh, fucking Luke brings carrots, like baggies Dude. of carrots and pepper, cut bell peppers. Full, fully hydrated, fully hydrated, fresh bell pepper in mm. every one of his fucking lunches. We're gonna, we're gonna get him converted. Say, pack the most dense calorie meal you can pack. This motherfucker brings peppers, celery, <laughs> and Ce- celery. Celery and has like carrot. negative calorie. It takes more calories to eat the celery <laughs> than it has in it. Motherfucker. Oh, Lukey, you're funny. Ah, uh, we also have. Um, Rockside Bear Camp's coming up. Yeah. There's like the next one. We have to. I thought we talked about we're going to pick a fucking listener. How are we going to do like a giveaway thing or we need to do something? We got to talk about that. We all should. We should also, if they want to come, I don't know how many people jump into this, but make us a video why you think you should be able to come to the Rockside Bear Camp. We do something like that. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll have to finish that up and do it quickly because that's three months out. Yeah. Like everything's hitting now. Yeah. The Night Force ELR. Night Force ELR, the shooting schools over in Montana. Obviously, we talked about the Ha Ha. Make sure you go get signed up because we are getting close to filled up. Um, we are going to have a lot of sweet-ass vendors here, though, and that's free. You can come check out all the vendors we have here, and that's May 4th and 5th. So put it on your calendar. But the uh, Rockside Bear Camp, then we're going uh, two weeks of shooting schools and the Night Force Steel Challenge. Yeah. Busy, busy. After that, we're good, though. <laughs> we got like a month or two and then we, hunting season starts then Africa, hunting season. Africa hunting season that's the fun part we jump right these motherfuckers they give you a name did you did you get it to uh, you? let me see <laughs> okay give it away rings before we get out of here you can buy the you can these you can get a set of oh premier rings or tika rings gracious I'm going to try, and then you tell me what you think it is. They're doing this shit on purpose. I think the YouTubers are doing this on purpose. I think the YouTubers are just fucking making up their names. Uh-huh. There's a guy that actually, I don't know if you saw the email, probably not, because I went to podcast at Shoot the Hunt. He actually said, I can prove this is my real name if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What, what in the hell are you doing? Where is that at? Is that your dad's house? How did you do the three pictures? We gotta, you got to have to put that up on the YouTube. Yes. And what is the pink rope? Is it? Anyways. It's a leash. Let's call this name out. We've got to figure this picture those out. Those stairs are not OSHA approved. No. Um, Dallin Wadoops. Ah, nice. Dallin Wadoops. You W-A-D-D-O-U-P-S. Wanna... Nice antelope in the picture. You want a set of rings. Get a hold of us at podcast, or sorry, get a hold of us at marketing at shoot hunt.com. Anyways, Luke's got some issues. Yes. All right. Anything else? Has Luke no, says that'll I do. I, I'm really excited about the whole, but we need to figure out how to do this bear camp deal. The giveaway? Yeah. Yes. I'll put it on my to-do list. We will figure it out, and we will um, bring it to you next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>